of all let's discuss about the electrical activity of the heart so as we all know that heart com is consists of two types of tissues one is the cardiac conduction system and another one is the cardiac muscles cardiac conduction system is unique because it has a property of auto excitability okay so that's why card is uh, cardiac system the heart is a self sustained organ because it generates its action potential by own now cardiac conduction system consists of sa node then we have this internodal atrial pathways then we have this av node then we have this bundle of his and purkinje system and bundle of his divides into bundle branches left bundle branch and right bundle branch okay so first of all we will dis we'll discuss about the sa node so sa node is the pacemaker of the heart why it is the pacemaker of the heart because it generates action potential at the highest rate that is 7200 per second per minute then we have these internodal atrial pathways which conduct the impulses from sa node to av node then we have this av node which is situated in the left lower part of ra sa node is situated in the right upper part of ra at the junction of svc and ra at the point where av node ends it continues as bundle of his which divides into right bundle branch and left bundle branch okay right bundle branch goes towards the right ventricle side and then further divides into the purkinje fibers which supplies the ventricular muscle while left bundle branch divides into left anterior fascicle and left posterior fascicle now left anterior fascicle goes to the anterior and septal side of the left ventricle while left posterior fascicle supplies the inferior and posterior wall of the left ventricle is it clear so one of the most important thing is this section is we should know that bundle of his divides into bundle branches these are left bundle branch and right right bundle branch left bundle branch further divides into left anterior fascicle and left posterior fascicle and left anterior fascicle divide supplies the anterior and septal section of the left ventricle and left posterior fascicle supplies the inferior and posterior wall of the left ventricle because in the upcoming section when we will discuss about the left bundle branch block and right bundle branch block or left anterior fascicular block or left posterior fascicular block then this thing will matter in that section now the the cardiac conduction tissue consists of all these things and all these things have a different speed so sa node has a speed of 0.05 meter per second atrial pathways have a speed of 1 meter per second av node also have a quite lower speed due to which there is av nodal delay and due to which we have this pr segment in the ec which is a isoelectric segment then we have this bundle of speed bundle of his then we have this purkinje system which has a higher speed so purkinje system supplies the ventricular muscle and due to which since the purkinje system is having the higher speed the qrs complex is narrow the normal qrs complex is narrow okay then this ventricular muscle at the speed of 1 meter per second 
Now, what is ECG? So ECG is the record or the fluctuations in potential during a cardiac cycle. Okay. Since body fluids are the good conductor, so the fluctuations in potential representing the algebraic sum of the action potentials of myocardial fibrils can be recorded extracellularly. So basically, since body fluids are the good conductor, so that due to which action potential in the heart can be recorded extracellularly. Now, let us come to the leads in the ECG. So we have majorly these limb leads and chest leads in ECG. Limb leads are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, AVL, AVR, and AVR. In chest leads, we have this V1 to V6 chest leads. These are the major chest leads. Then we can also have V7 to V9 that we'll discuss later. And we can also have this RV1 to RV6. These are some additional chest leads. So limb leads are the XY plane leads while the chest leads are the YZ plane leads. This is also known as frontal plane leads. Clear? Leads can also be divided into unipolar leads or bipolar leads. So unipolar leads are the leads in which the active or exploring electrode is connected to an indifferent electrode at zero potential. Okay, so we have only one exploring electrode and another electrode is an imaginary electrode which is connected to a zero potential. While in bipolar leads, we use two active electrodes. Clear? And what is the rule of the graph of the ECG? The rule is when depolarization is moving towards an active electrode, it produces a positive deflection. While when depolarization moves in the opposite direction, it produces a negative reflection. So this rule will be quite helpful when we'll discuss the ECG. Okay. Now we'll discuss about the limb leads. They're very important. Suppose this is the heart. Normal heart lies in the mediastinum and it is more towards the left side. Okay. Action potential starts from this S node, go towards this AV node, and then it will spread into the ventricular muscle. And since ventricular muscle of the left side is more thicker than the right side, so it is more towards depolarization is more towards the left side. This is from the first year physiology part, so we'll not discuss more detail about this. So from this diagram, we know that heart is lying towards the left side. And also, the action potential goes from upper end of the body to the lower end of the body. Okay. So most of the leads are made in this way that the action potential and the direction of the leads are in the same direction. So that the recorded ECG will be in upward direction. Okay. So our aim was to keep the action potential, keep the leads of the ECG in the direction of the action potential so that the recorded ECG would be a upward ECG rather than a downward ECG. Okay. So let's take the blank page. This was our heart. Basically, if we consider, consider the ECG leads as the cameras looking into the heart, so first of all, we developed this lead two. And lead two is the best lead of the ECG because it is just in the direction of the axis of the heart. Okay. So we have developed this lead two in which negative electrode was placed at right upper limb and positive electrode was placed at left lower limb. Clear. So our aim was to put the positive electrode towards the lower limb and also towards the left side so that the recorded ECG would be an upward one. So that the electrodes would be in the direction of the axis of the heart. So this was leaped. 
then we have this lead one in which negative electrode is in the right upper limb and positive electrode is in the left upper limb so this was also in the direction of the heart that is towards the left side now we have this another lead 3 in which negative electrode is in the left upper limb and positive electrode it is in the left lower limb clear so we have developed this three leads initially to look into the heart then we thought that these three leads are looking towards the heart from different directions so we can develop more leads so that we can look into the heart from more angles also okay so hum aisa soch sakte hain that these leads are just the cameras taking the picture of the heart from different views okay so we have developed these three leads after these we have decided that we can have more cameras to look into the heart toward from more angles okay so we have developed three more leads how we have developed a lead perpendicular to lead one and this is a unipolar lead okay and this lead is facing in the direction of the foot so this is known as ab okay. then we have this lead perpendicular to lead two and this lead is looking into the direction of left upper limb so we called it as avl then we have this lead perpendicular to lead 3 and this is looking into the direction of right upper limb so we called is called it as avr okay now we have these six leads one peculiarity about one of these leads is that this lead avr is pointing in the direction of right upper limb which is completely opposite to the direction of the axis of the heart okay so due to this all the waves in ecg of lead avr are negative okay. because avr points to the direction that is opposite to the direction of the axis of the heart due to which all the complexes all the waves in the lead avr are negative so these limb leads we have discussed we have if we will draw a schematic diagram like this we have these three leads lead 1 lead 2 this is lead 3 clear 60 degree angle here we have 60 degree angle then we have this lead perpendicular to lead 1 then we have this lead perpendicular to lead 2 we have this lead perpendicular to lead this is lead apl this is lead abf this is lead abr yeah. so this is the diagram that we draw for limb leads we'll see the angle this angle between avl and lead 1 this is 90 degree this angle between avr and lead 3 is also 90 and this angle between one and avr yeah so this is the schematic diagram of the limb leads also when we have these three leads lead 1 lead 2 lead 3 this triangle is known as einthoven triangle and applying the vector equation to this triangle lead 2 is equals to lead 1 plus lead this is known as einthoven equation and this is a 
equilateral triangle. So angle between lead one and two is sixty degree, and two and three is also sixty degree. Clear? Now let us discuss about the chest leads. So when we have developed these limb leads, these leads are in the X Y plane only. That is in the frontal plane. So we thought that we can also put leads in the Y Z plane. So that we can have more pictures of the heart. Okay. So we developed these six chest leads. These six chest leads are typical chest lead. We also have some another chest lead that we have discussed, like V seven to V nine and R V one to R V six. Okay. What is the location of lead V one? So lead V one is situated in right. Parasternal area, fourth intercostal space. Okay. The lead V two is located in left parasternal area, fourth intercostal space. Then we have lead V three. It is situated between lead V two and Anywhere between V two and V four, lead V four is situated in fifth intercostal space in mid clavicular line. Lead V five in fifth intercostal space, anterior axillary line. And we have lead V six in fifth ICS, mid axillary. So these are the six important chest leads. Clear? Now, if we'll draw a diagram, suppose this is the sternum. This is lead V one. This is V two, and these are on the left side. Okay, lead V three to V six are on the left. This is right side of the body. This is left side of the body. So this is V one, V two. This is V three, V four, five, and beyond this, V six. Okay. Now. If we want to look at the posterior wall of the heart, so we have three more leads behind V six, that is V seven, V eight, V nine. Okay. They look at the posterior wall of the heart. And if we want to look at the right wall of the heart, we have lead V R V one, R V two. R V one is in the position of the lead V two, and R V two is in the position of lead V one. Then we have R V three in position of lead V three, but on the right side. R V four in position of lead V four, but on the right side. R V five and R V six similarly respectively. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we have discussed about these lead leads. That is lead one, two, and three. If we we'll discuss grossly why waves are formed. So P wave is formed because of the atrial depolarization. Suppose this is the heart. Depolarization begins from S A node and going towards A B node. So when there is depolarization of the atrium, a P wave is formed. Then there is A B nodal delay due to which P R segment is there. Then we have this ventricular depolarization, which is forming the Q R S complex, in which First of all, there is septal depolarization, and the direction of septal depolarization is from left to right. Okay, then there is major ventricular depolarization, and lastly, there are depolarization at the bases. The direction of which is towards the upward part of the heart. then there is a t wave which is there because of the ventricular repolarization and in the end we have u wave which is supposed to be due to ventricular myocytes with long action potential or due to repolarization of papillary vessels so there are different theories about the u wave but most accepted Concept is these two only. So 
if we'll discuss grossly how our ECG looks like in lead two. So this is a heart. Lead two is this. First of all, there is depolarization of the atrium, and the direction of depolarization is in the direction of lead two. So we have this positive P wave. Then this is PR segment because of AV nodal delay. Then we have this septal depolarization, which is in direction of left to right. So it is a downward deflection in lead two because it is in direction opposite to that of the lead two. Then we have this R wave in lead two because of major ventricular depolarization, which is in the direction of lead two. And we have this depolarization of the base region, which is in direction opposite to lead two. We have this S wave due to this. Then we have thysoelectric QT segment. Then we have T wave due to repolarization of the ventricles. If we discuss about the direction of depolarization, so direction of depolarization is from endocardium to epicardium. Reason being that the conduction tissue that is Purkinje fibers, bundle of his bundle branches are located in the endocardium region only. Okay. And repolarization direction is from epicardium to endocardium. These things we will discuss. Yeah. Now we will discuss about ECG sheet or ECG paper. This is a very important. Okay. So ECG paper moves with a speed of 300 large squares per minute. Or we can say this as 1500 small squares per minute. So this is the large square of ECG paper. In which there are 25 small squares, five small squares horizontally in a horizontal line, and five small squares in a vertical line. Okay. And each small square is of 1 mm length and 1 mm height. Okay. So ECG paper moves with a speed of 300 large square per minute, or we can say. 1500 small squares per minute because one small square, one large square contains five small squares. Okay. Now, time duration. Now we know that one minute may there are 300 large squares. So, one large square would be of 0.2 second. And one large square contains five small squares. So one small square would be of 0 0.04 second duration. Yeah. This is strongly written 0 0.04 second. Yeah. Now come the main topic of discussion interpretation of a ECG. First of all, we'll not diagnose or make diagnosis by look, looking at ECG directly. Okay? We'll interpret these 10 points first and all the ECG that we'll look at. In this way, we'll not miss any, any sign or any important diagnosis. Okay? So these are 10 things and we'll look into them successively okay so first of all we'll look at the rate then rhythm then axis then p wave and pr interval after that qrs complex st segment qt interval t wave progression of r wave in chest leads and lastly we can also look at if u wave is present or not clear yeah. so first of all we'll look how to calculate a rate from an ECG. Yeah. 
so now we know that ecg paper is moving with the speed of 300 large squares per minute here yeah. so from any ecg we can see that well this is the ecg this is the rr interval yeah. up if this rr interval the distance between these two rr is three big squares so the rate is 300 by 3 that is 100 okay. so rate can be calculated by this formula 300 upon r r interval in terms of large squares okay or rate can also be calculated as 1500 upon rr interval in terms of small squares clear if the heart rate is less than 60 then we called it as bradycardia and if it is more than 100 then we called it as tachycardia okay. so first thing to look into an ecg is the rate okay second thing that we look in an ecg is rhythm so in rhythm rhythm can be regular or irregular when we call the rhythm as regular is when the rr interval is same okay. suppose this is the ecg one QRS is this, second is this, third is this, fourth is this, and RR interval is same in all these complexes. And irregular rhythm is when the RR interval is variable. Okay. Suppose this is one QRS, the second QRS is this, third is this, fourth is this, fifth is this. Okay. So this RR interval are variable. This is known as irregular rhythm. Now, in most of the pathologies, we have the regular rhythm in ECG. Only three conditions would be having an irregular rhythm. One is atrial fibrillation. Another one is multifocal atrial tachycardia. Third one is atrial flutter with variable. AV block. Okay. We'll discuss in detail about these three things in the upcoming classes. Okay. Let us look into one of the images. So this is an ECG in which this RR interval, this RR interval. This RR interval and this RR. All of these are variable. So rhythm here is variable. This is the ECG of atrial fibrillation, which we'll discuss in upcoming classes. Then, then third thing to look in an ECG is axis. Okay. So for excess, we only need limb beats. Okay. And this is a very important diagram that we need in finding the excess of the heart that we have drawn in previous section. So this was lead one. This was lead area. So we would be needing only two or three leads for finding the axis of the heart. Okay. This is lead one, this is lead AB. This is zero degree, this is 90 degree, this is 180 degree, this is minus 10. First of all, we should know what is the normal axis of the heart. The normal axis of the heart is minus 30 degree to plus 100 degree and for all practical purposes to make our lives easier we consider is a minus 30 to plus 90 degree 
to make the calculation easy. Okay. So this is minus 30 and the lead at minus 30 degrees lead area. This is plus 90 degree. This region is the normal axis of the heart. This is because the muscle of left ventricle is thicker than the right ventricle. So our heart's axis is more towards the left side normally. This region from minus 30 to plus 90, this is left axis deviation. Then this area from plus 90 to plus 180. This is right axis deviation. And finally, this area from minus 90 to 180 is extreme axis deviation or it is also known as northwest axis deviation. Here. Now, how to find the axis of the heart? We have these two leads, lead one and eight. So we will look at these two leads only. If QRS complex in lead one is positive and lead two, lead AVF is also positive, then what is the axis of the heart? Okay. So first of all, how to come to know that the QRS complex in lead one is positive and AVF is positive. So suppose this is a QRS complex. So it is clear that this is a positive QRS complex. But suppose this is one of a QRS complex. Then how will we come to know that this is a positive QRS complex or a negative QRS complex? So for these type of QRS complexes, we have this formula R minus S minus Q. If R minus S minus Q is positive, then it is a positive QRS complex. If it is negative, then it is a negative QRS complex. So suppose in this QRS, Q wave is of 4 mm, R is of 10 mm, and S is of 5 mm. Okay. So this is 10 minus 4 minus 5, 1 plus 1. So this is positive QRS complex. Okay. Now, what is the axis if lead 1 is positive QRS complex and in lead AVF there is also positive QRS complex? Since lead 1 is positive, that is the QRS complex in lead 1 is positive. So axis would be in this hemisphere. Okay, so if axis would be in this hemisphere, then only lead one can show a positive QRS. Now, since lead AVF is also positive, so axis would be in this hemisphere, then only lead AVF can be positive. Okay. So overlapped region is this, means axis would be from zero to plus 90 degrees. And that would be a normal axis. Clear? Now, second scenario. Second scenario is lead one is negative and lead AVF is positive. Clear? So in, if the QRS complex in lead one is negative, axis would be in this hemisphere. That is the hemisphere opposite to lead one. Okay. And since QRS in lead AVF is positive, axis would be in this hemisphere. 
so the overlapped region is this and so the axis would be from my plus 90 to minute which is right axis clear third scenario heat one is having negative qrs and avf is also having negative in this scenario this is lead one suppose this is lead avf since a lead one is negative axis would be in this hemisphere and since lead avf is also negative axis would be in this hemisphere <coughs> so overlap region is this so the axis would be extreme axis. Clear? Four scenario. Till now we have seen that we can derive the axis of the heart by looking at only lead one and ABF. Now the last scenario is this is lead one, this is ABF. Now this scenario is lead one is positive and lead AVF is negative. In this scenario, since lead one is having a positive QRS, X is going to be in this hemisphere. And AVF is having a negative QRS, so X is going to be in this hemisphere. So overlap region is this. Now till minus 30. This can be a normal axis, and from minus 30 to minus 90, this can be left axis division. So for this scenario, we would be needing one more lead, that is lead 2, the lead perpendicular to minus 30 degree. Okay. Now, if lead 2 is having a positive QRS, then axis would be in this hemisphere. And the overlap region of all these three would come out to be this, that is 0 to minus 30. So the axis would be normal. While if QRS and lead two is negative, overlapped region would be so exit would be from minus thirty to minus ninety. That is left exit. So this is the only scenario in which we would be needing lead 2. Otherwise, in all other conditions, we would be needing only lead 1 and AVF for access. Clear? In upcoming classes, we'll discuss about the causes of left axis deviation, causes of right axis deviation. <coughs> then four things to look in an ECG is P-wave. P-waves for PWFC, majorly look at lead 2 and lead P1. This is a heart. Lead 2 is this. Okay. Depolarization of atrium starts from SA node, goes towards AV node, and towards LA. Really? So in lead 2, P wave is a positive deflection, which is less than 2.5 mm or 2.5 mm small square in width and less than 2.5 mm small square in height. Yeah. So this is a normal P wave in lead to. If we divide it, so this portion is for RA depolarization and this is for LED. Okay. Similarly, lead V1, since lead V1 is somewhat here. And it is in YZ plane. SA0 fires and there is depolarization of RA and LA. Since LA is the posterior most chamber of heart. So depolarization seems to be going from away from V1 
during LA depolarization. Okay. So in lead V1, there is a biphasic V wave. That is upward deflection is because of RA, RA depolarization and downward is because of LA depolarization. <laughs> and in this biphasic V wave, upward deflection is of one less than one mm width and less than one mm height. Also, downward deflection is also less than one mm width and less than one mm height. Clear? Now, pathology of P waves. So, in lead two, P wave is like this. R A L less than 2.5 mm or less than 2.5 small square width less than 2.5 mm or less than 2.5 small square height. Okay. Up suppose there is this RA enlargement. Okay. Since there is RA enlargement, when when the SA node fires and there is depolarization of RA going, at the same time LA, LA also depolarizes. Okay. So most of the time there is RA enlargement then LA enlargement. So RA depolarization and LA depolarization, okay. But in this scenario, RA and LA get depolarized at the same time because jitne time mein SA not fire karke RA ko depolarize karega, utne time mein wo LA ko bhi karke a jayega because of RA enlargement. Okay? So RA enlargement mein in lead to we have this tall P wave. So width of the P wave would be same that is less than 2.5 mm why because the later half of the time of p wave is because of la depolarization and since la is of normal size the so time would be same but height would increase because now la and ra would depolarize at the same time clear so height would be now more than 2.5 mm in lead to So if the height of P wave is more than 2.5 mm in lead to, it suggests RA enlargement, which is also known as P pulmonale, because most common cause of RA enlargement is pulmonary hypertension. Here. Yeah. Now suppose there is this LA enlargement. This is a normal P wave in lead to. Now, since LA enlarges, RA get depolarized early, but LA would take more than normal time to depolarize. So, there is this broad P wave. And there is a notching here in P wave, which is known as bifid P wave. So, this would be a broad bifid P wave. Width would be more than 2.5 mm, while height would remain normal, that is less than 2.5 mm or 2.5 small square. Okay. So, broad P wave in lead to suggest LA enlargement, which is also known as P material. So the most common cause of LA enlargement is either MS, multiple or mitral stenosis or MR, that is mitral regurgitation, clear? Now in lead V1, suppose there is LA enlargement. So the normal P wave in lead V1 is like this, with biphasic, with height less than 1 mm and depth is also less than 1 mm. So suppose there is LA enlargement, the depth would increase, that is the downward deflection would increase and it would become more than 1 mm. While if there is RA enlargement, the upward deflection would increase, that is it would become more than 1 mm. Clear? So if there is RA enlargement, then upward deflection would increase by more than 1 mm. If there is downward deflection, then if there is LA enlargement, the downward deflection would increase and the size would become more than 1 mm. Okay. Till now, we have looked four things in ECG that is, heart rate, 
rhythm axis p wave now fifth thing to look in an ecg is pr interval pr segment is because of av nodal delay normal pr segment is less than 2.5 mm or less than 2.5 small squares pr interval is p wave plus pr segment so it is less than 5 mm <coughs> or less than 5 small squares clear now normal pr interval is less than 5 mm or less than 5 small squares. if there is increase in this pr interval it suggests heart blocks okay we'll discuss av block in upcoming section that is av blocks are of two three types first degree second degree third degree okay so one thing common in all these things is increase in pr interval pr interval can be decrease in wp do syndrome that is there is an accessory pathway which is bypassing the av node okay so there is no av nodal delay leading to shortened pr segment leading to shortened pr interval okay yeah. now fifth sixth thing that is we are looking in an ecg is qrs complex qrs complex is due to ventricular depolarization that all of us the normal qrs complex is less than 2.5 to 3 small squares that is point 10 to 0.12 second because one small square is of 0.04 seconds if qrs complex is more than 0.12 seconds or more than three small squares then we call it as broad qrs there are various causes of broad qrs complexes that we'll discuss later yeah now look at this ecg we can clearly see that qrs complex here is equal to 5 small squares that is 0.2 second so it is a broad in this ecg also qrs complex is somewhere around four small squares so it is also broad qrs so there are various causes of broad qrs that we will discuss later but these two ecgs are of hyperkalemia which is also one of a cause of broad qrs clear okay. seven thing that we are looking in an ecg is st segment okay so st segment is generally an isoelectric segment and it is it represents repolarization phase only okay now st segment is very important component because it elevates or depresses in various pathologies what are the causes of st segment elevation and depression the most important cause is st segment elevated mi it can also be elevated in pericarditis the cord subcardiomyopathy lv analysis and st segment depression can be because of reciprocal changes non st segment elevated mi and various other causes 
there are also another other causes of st elevation like repolarization anomalies which we'll discuss later on okay so which st elevation is no is called as significant st elevation in case of stem okay. so first of all this is a qrs complex this is st segment so this point is known as j point that is junction of qrs and st segment okay. so in case of STEMI, st elevation more than 1 mm in two anatomically contiguous anatomically contiguous means the leads which rep are representing the same wall only okay so lead two and three are contiguous because these represents inferior wall but lead one and three are not contiguous similarly lead one and avl are contiguous because these are representing the lateral wall. Okay. We'll discuss more detail about this section. So ST's elevation more than one mm in two continuous <coughs> to anatomically contiguous leads. Two or more. Okay. Except lead V2 and V3. So for lead V2 and V3. ST segment elevation should be more than 2 mm in case of males more than 40 years. In case of males more less than 40 years, ST segment elevation in lead V2 and V3 should be more than 2.5 mm. <coughs> While in case of females, ST segment elevation in lead V2 and V3 should be more than 1.5 mm. Here. Now, in lead V7 to V9, that is the leads of the posterior wall, ST segment elevation more than 0.5 mm is significant. In leads RV1 to RV6, that is the posterior wall leads. Sorry, right wall leads. ST elevation more than 0.5 mm is significant, except in males less than 30 years. ST elevation more than 1 mm is significant. Okay. Now, ST depression. So, if there is ST depression of more than 0.5 mm in all leads, So this is one mm. More than one mm in all leads except V2 and V3, in which ST depression is more than 0.5 mm. Then it is significant ST depression for NSTEM. Clear? Now, eighth thing is T wave. Okay, so, T wave represent repolarization of ventricles. They are considered tall when they are more than 5 mm in limb leads or more than 10 mm in chest leads. Tall T waves are associated with hyperkalemia and hyperacute stem. Like we have seen in this ECG. Right? This is an ECG of hyperkalemia. So we have this broad QRS. Also, there is this large T wave here. Clear? Also, we can have these T wave inversions okay, that we'll discuss in upcoming section. Ninth thing that we look for in an ECG is QT interval. Okay, so QT interval comprises of QRS complex plus ST segment plus T wave. QT interval is a very important component because 
QT interval contains ST segment and T wave, which represents repolarization. So if QT interval is prolonged, the repolarization is prolonged. And if repolarization is pro prolonged, there are more risk of ventricular tachycardia. Clear? Now, prolonged QT interval leads to ventricular arrhythmia, which is known as torsades de pointes or polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. Now, if heart rate is more, QT interval would decrease, and if heart rate is less, QT interval would increase. So we need to have a ratio that would neutralize the effect of heart rate on QT interval. So we use this QTC, that is corrected QT interval, which is calculated with the help of this Bazet formula, that is QTC is equal to QT interval upon under root of RR. Now, if this QTC is more than 0.44 milliseconds in males or more than 0.46 seconds in females, then it is QT prolongation. Now, the causes of QT prolongation can be congenital or can be acquired due to drugs like erythromycin, hydroxychloroquine, amiodrone, or electrolyte abnormalities like hypokalemia, hypocalcemia, and hypomagnesia. Okay. Now, by grossly looking at an ECG, how to calculate the QT C interval? So suppose if this is only valid if heart rate is more than 70. So if heart rate is more than 70, this is one R wave, QRS complex, this is another, this is this is T wave. So if heart rate is more than 70 and QT interval, it is this, is less than half of RR interval, then it excludes QT prolongation. Okay. And if QT interval is more than half of RR interval, then either it can be normal QT or prolonged. So by grossly looking at an ECD, we can suspect that there is QT prolongation or not. Then the tenth thing to look in an ECG is progression of R waves in chest leaves. Okay, so this is a heart. This is lead V1. This is V2, V3. Right. So V1, V2 are known as septal leads and they are more towards the right side of the heart. V3, V4 are known as anterior wall leads and V5, V6 are known as lateral wall leads. Normal axis of the heart is normally in this direction. So the major ventricular depolarization direction is more towards V4, V5, V6 and V1, V2 are opposite to that. Okay. So QRS complex normally in lead V1 is first a small wave, R wave, due to septal depolarization and a big downward S wave due to major ventricular depolarization. Similarly, in lead V2, we have this R wave due to septal depolarization and S wave due to ventricular depolarization. Similarly, if we keep on going towards V3, V4, V5, V6, so in V3, the R wave would keep on increasing and S wave would keep on decreasing. And in V5 and V6, there is a R wave and can be a small S wave present there. Okay. In lead V5 and V6, we can have this small Q wave initially due to septal depolarization and a big R wave, a small R, S wave. 
तो दिस इज नॉर्मल प्रोग्रेशन ऑफ यू आर एस कॉम्प्लेक्स तो इन वी वन वी हैव दिस स्मॉल आर एंड बिग एस वी टू आर वे वुड इंक्रीज वी थ्री एंड वी फोर आर ट्रांजिशन जोन दैट इज आर एंड एस वुड बिकम इक्वल ऑलमोस्ट देन वी फाइव एंड वी सिक्स आर इन विच देर इज अ बिग आर वे एंड स्मॉल एस वे क्यू वेब कैन ऑल्सो दिस इज नॉर्मल प्रोग्रेशन ऑफ आर वेज in some of the pathologies this normal progression of r waves doesn't occur it can be because of clockwise rotation it can be because of ecmp and a lot of pathologies that we'll discuss it 11 thing that we can also look in ecg is u wave so normally u waves are so small that they are difficult to look in an ecg but if they are there they are best seen in lead v2 and lead v3 and they are generally smaller very smaller than t waves okay but in pathological conditions like hypokalemia u waves size increases and they are almost equal to t wave clear yeah. so we have seen that for a ecg interpretation we we'll look at these 11 things so in sequential manner we will look at these things first is rate second is rhythm third is axis then then we'll look at p wave then we'll look at pr interval then we'll look at qrs complex then st segment then t wave then qt interval progression of r wave in precordial leaf and a u wave so this class was about basics of ecg in upcoming sections we'll discuss about the pathologies different pathologies detailed explanation of different pathologies their ecgs how to diagnose them and their treatment okay.